Hey guys, Ben here from Velflex. Now congratulations on the purchase of your new Dual Air Fusion. Now guys, I'm gonna take you through a couple of things that you need to know about your new press. Now that you've received it or receiving it in the next few days, that sort of thing, once you've unboxed it and created it, there's a couple of things that I wanna take you through that are really important to make sure that you get the longevity out of the machine, the usability and all of those sorts of things. Okay, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna start off, we're gonna show you exactly where the power points and things that go, okay? So over here on the side, you'll have a look just down here, there's a power plug. That's where it plugs in, okay? You'll also see that there's two fuses there. They're the little two white dots just below the power switch. Now, this is really important from a power point of view. It needs to plug into a 15 amp circuit. So if you have a look over here and, and swing to the back, Dave, here we've got this plugged into a single power point here. It's a 15 amp dedicated circuit. This is really important, guys. Most power points in this room, most power points in most buildings are 10 amp circuits, okay? This has a special plug on it where the earth pin on the bottom, the grounding pin is bigger and it won't plug into your standard power point. It needs to go into a dedicated a 15 amp socket um, for running this machine here. Cool, okay. Once you've done that, you've plugged it in, you've plugged the other end in of the cord, you've made sure that the, the fuses are pressed in, that they're not popped out. Cool, we can turn it on, and that's the big red button over there as well. We've turned that on. Also, what you'll see is it comes with a foot pedal. Okay, it looks like this one here. It also plugs in over here on the side. You can see it just here where I'm pointing as well. So make sure that that's plugged in, and then you put it in front of you, sort of where you're gonna access it to, you know, press it with your foot, right there, cool. Okay guys, this is the Dual Air Fusion. It has obviously two base plates. It has the one top head. It's going to move left and right, just like this, back and forth. Now, something I didn't sort of show you is the regulator, okay? You do need to plug it into air as well, into for compressed air. As you saw, that movement left and right happening with the foot pedal, it's compressed air that's driving that left and right. It's also compressed air that's moving it up and down. Now, compressed air, a compressor, you're looking at something that's between 50 to 70 litres is the ideal size for a compressor. And pretty much that compressor needs to be full of air to run this. Now, a couple of things. You need to be making sure that your compressor is compressing air above that 80 PSI mark, okay? So have a look, talk to the dealer, whoever sold you the compressor, have a look at where it cuts in. So that is as low, where the air pressure is going down, 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 the compressor will cut in and it'll pump the air back up in its tank. Make sure that it's not going below 80 PSI. It might go all the way up to say 120 PSI. Absolutely great, perfect. Just try to make sure it doesn't go below 80 PSI, and if it does, you can probably adjust it and set it so it doesn't. Cool, when it goes down to 80, turns on, pumps up. What we also do here to make sure that you have consistency is this regulator, so there's a regular red around the back, and I'm gonna show you that. Right here, Dave, if you come and have a quick look, there is a regulator around here, and what we wanna do is we wanna adjust this by this particular knob on top, okay? What we do is we turn that, when we turn that there, it's also going to turn and adjust. You can see this gauge right here, okay? And we wanna set that on 80, okay? So we've got 100 and that's about 80 right there, which is, we've got the 50 over here, we've got the 100, make sure it's on 80, okay? If this regulator is set to 80 and our compressor, wherever that is, whether it's in the next room or it's even just beside it, if the lowest it goes is 80 PSI, we can make sure that this machine always has 80 PSI available to it uh, to make sure that its pressing is even and consistent and something you can rely on. Now, a couple of things around compressed air. When you compress it, it builds up moisture. So you do need to make sure that one, there's a regulator on your compressor or the little drain valve on your compressor and you drain the water out of your tank, okay? If you don't, your tank, your compressed air tank is gonna fill up with water. That water is then going to be passing through your air lines into this regulator and then worst into the machine, okay? And that absolutely damages parts within the machine over time, they rust out and things like that. That is not covered by warranty, okay? In here, and I'm gonna show you, see this little bulb down the bottom, okay? This little bulb here on this regulator is what actually catches the water here. On the bottom, if we just twist that, okay? And see how I'm screwing it. Oh, I'll go the other way, go this way. 
unscrewing it, it'll eventually start letting out air. See how I'm letting out air, and then I'll just screw it up. Cool. Any water that was built up in this, it would have sprayed out the bottom, and now I know that I've got no water built up in this little tank. So as you're using it tomorrow, the next day, water will come up into this little regulator because you always get a little bit of water built up in the lines. It'll collect into this little bulb here and you just need to be able to undo that, let the air out, let the water out, and then do it back up again so it's not leaking. Guys, that should be done every single day. At the end of the day, when you're packing down, just before you turn it off, undo that couple of seconds, tighten it up. You'll see it as soon as you let it go. If there's water in there, it, it squirts out really quick and then you can tighten up. If that tank fills up, it's got nowhere to collect the water and the water then starts passing into your machine. You've got water in your components and things like that causing rust. That's not a great thing. So that's really, really important, guys. Cool. Okay, so now we're looking at our dual. We've got our two positions. We've set our PSI at 80. Okay, now what we've got is, let's look at our fusion controller, okay? So on the fusion controller, we've also got a couple of buttons and things like that. Cool, here you can see temperature. To set temperature, and I'm gonna use the little pen that's on front, you can try with your fingers just by clicking, it also works. But if you're using the pen, it makes it a little bit more accurate, okay? I can set and jump around temps by clicking the green bar on top. You can see it changing. And once I've got relatively what I want, I can then use these arrows to adjust. Cool, make sure once I've got what I want, I press the green, or press the tick, so that it saves it in, okay? So I've now saved that to 150 degrees and it'll slowly heat up to 150. Same with the pressure, I've got it at 3.4 bar. I could decrease that to three bar, come down to my little tick, cool. And now you've heard it just change to three bar, same with time. Cool, let's just say I want to go to four, five seconds. Done. Tick box, I've saved it in. Now guys, let's have a look at that. I've got temperature, pressure, and time. Now I've got a couple of different settings as well here. So the machine is on the right hand side, or the table is on the right hand side. If I press the foot pedal and move it across here to the left, it now jumps up to this section here. So what I've got is I can actually set my pressure and time differently between the left and the right. You actually can set the temperature to be different between left and right, but I don't advise it because the temperature can't go up or down fast enough and it's very inefficient. And so always make sure that your temperature is the same when you're setting the left setting, okay? And whether that's press one or press two, because this is, you can have two different settings here. Press one versus press two, and I'll show you how that works in a second. Cool. When I go back across to the right-hand side, it's gonna jump down to here. See, see how it's jumped down? So now I'm doing the second press on the right-hand side. If I wanna go change it to the first press, and the first press might be, first press is the application of the transfer, second press is after I've peeled the plastic off and I'm just doing a post press onto the garment, so I want it to be shorter. Okay, that's how we use these first and second presses. Now, guys, we can also have presets, so it says custom, but if we come into this little button here, and I'll do that again, this little menu button here, when I go into this, you can see a whole heap of pre-saved um, pre films and settings. Okay, so if I press on DTF, clicking to the DTF, I've now said that I'm on the right-hand side, I've got a DTF transfer, and it's got a certain temperature, pressure, and time. I might choose, hang on, now I'm doing a express print transfer, and when I click express print, it's going to be changing the temperature, pressure, and time to suit the express print sort of vinyl. And you can create as many of these as you like simply by pressing the plus button and going in and, and actually adding your own. You can also edit any that are already there. Cool. Going across the menu, we've got obviously presets, you can lock it so that setting changes can't be made, okay? This is more for management if, or a team lead if they wanted to lock it so it couldn't be, settings could be played with. Um, here we've got users, so you can create different users depending on if you want to calculate how many presses have been done by a particular person, that sort of thing. You can also have different uh, permission levels per user as well. Settings, 
So by going into the settings, this is where we set time, date, the whole works. So going through time and date, auto, time zone, how you want the display, now whether you want it in bar or PSI, okay? I prefer working in bar, make Celsius, English, auto on off, okay? Now this is where you can have the machine automatically turn on in the morning. Say on a Monday morning you said enable and I want it to turn on at 7.45 because my team get in at eight o'clock and I want it to turn off at 5.30 because they finish at 5.30 or 5.45, something like that. Cool, you could set that, otherwise have it off. There we go. Just remember any changes you make, always come back and tick the plus button, the tick button, okay? Calibration, this is where we calibrate the temperature. Now calibrating the temperature is done by a thermocouple, okay, and that's something that you can buy to actually test the temperature of the plate by touching the plate and it gives you a reading, okay? Um, if you're using an infrared gun, don't use it directly onto the plate. You will get an inaccurate sort of reading. If you're using a thermo uh, infrared gun, just to check that you are getting the temp, what I would do is put a t-shirt here, heat press the t-shirt a couple of times, but have the gun pointing, the infrared pointing, press it, it moves out of the way, but while it was moving out of the way, when it popped up, you're sort of checking the temperature that's on the fabric. And as long as it's within, you know, four or five degrees of what you've set, you know, so if you've got it set at 150, if your gun's telling you you've got 145 in the fabric as soon as it's sort of lifted up, I'd be saying that's relatively accurate that you're getting 150 degrees in the plate because the fabric had 145 in it when it, when it popped up. Cool, okay. In the settings, of systems, we can go in and we can turn a power save on. So this is if the machine hasn't been used in an hour, hasn't been touched, it's gonna to turn the heating element off. And this is an energy saving feature. It's also a safety feature as well. You can call your machine what you like, target temp and shuttle delay. So see this shuttle delay right here, okay? I can go and put a five second shuttle delay in. And what that is, when we are in auto mode, and I'll show you auto mode afterwards, but when we're in auto mode and does a press, the heat plate automatically gets out of the way and shuttles from the left to the right or the right to the left. If we want to put a delay in that shuttle, we do it here. So we could put a five second delay, meaning it pops up, it waits five seconds, and then it moves to the other side. Cool. Wi-Fi, now in Wi-Fi we'll be able to connect to our Wi-Fi network and also this is where we can connect it to our Hotronics Cloud which allows us to record the cadence of pressing and things like that. More importantly it also allows us to update the software of the Fusion so that you've got the latest updates um, software so that the machine works as efficiently and effectively as it can. If there's improvements in any process and things like that obviously that's where you're going to get them on those updates. Cool, here's the cloud connection. So this is where Hotronics Cloud and you can connect to the cloud, okay? Um, we're currently disconnected, but we have set this up to be able to connect to it. You've got software when it's connected to the cloud. Any software updates will come written here to say download the, the latest software update and lasers. And this is where we turn our lasers on and off. Now guys, if we have a bit of a look here, we've got A and B. B side is here, and the A side is over this side here. So if I want to turn them on, I can just turn them on as I need. So I've turned on lasers one and two. You can see that one and two have turned on, okay? And you can see them on the silver plate right here. We've got three and we've also got four. Now, often people won't have all four lasers on or anything like that. They're often only using one or two. And my recommendation on how to use lasers is quite simple. You'll see we've got this laser here set up one horizontal, one vertical, okay? And I'm using these ones here. To actually set the laser, there's a locking screw right here, okay? You undo that, and when you undo that locking screw, it allows the laser to move around on this axis, okay? Dave, and if you have a quick look, while I'm moving that, I'm moving this laser on that axis, cool. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put it roughly where I want it. So this one here, let's say it's the middle one that I want to lock that into and I'm locking that down. Okay, it's roughly, it's in the position that I want. But 
it may not be straight, okay? So that's where I can then twist and turn this laser, okay? Now you'll see this laser, I've actually pushed it out forward a little bit. What we find is it's easier to actually twist and turn when it's, when it's actually pushed out forward and I can grab onto it and just using my hands I can twist it, okay? Twisting it left, twisting it right. Fine, very fine adjustments to be able to square this line up. And once I've done that, I can leave it there. If I wanted to sort of push it back a little bit further, I could, okay? And it is quite tight. And the reason for that is so that it doesn't move at all, okay? Making sure that that lock tight, that's pushed in tight. It's not going to move any further. This one here, again, if I was wanting to move it around, I could. If I want to adjust this one because it's not quite square, See this here, let's just say this line, I go, no, it's not square. And by the way, the machine does come with a, a template that you lay over this uh, bottom plate and it has all of your straight lines and things like that. So you'd lay that over the top, get your laser set up and go, okay, this is not perfectly square. I'd be able to come here and just slightly turn it. There we go. And now I've got a more horizontal, I've got that perfect straight horizontal uh, line. I've got my template on there to be able to set it up to. Cool, done, take the template away and I leave it there. Now guys, I don't recommend moving these lasers job by job, okay? We want efficiency in setting up and printing and that's what we want to do, lay the shirt on, get printing. But absolutely the lasers can be used as target horizontal straight lines, horizontal or vertical, that are guides just as important as the outside of the plate. So if I'm grabbing a shirt and I'll grab one right here, Say I grab this shirt and I'm going to slide it on. Okay. What I'm doing is I'm going to grab the seams. I'm going to make sure that my shirt is perfectly square to the plate because that's really important. Doesn't matter if you've got any laser guides. If you don't get the shirt square to the plate, it's really hard to get your print straight. What I'm gonna do is I'm not gonna move these lasers to say, okay, my print is gonna go up in the left, left chest here. Here's my horizontal line between my two underarm seams. Okay, so there's my horizontal between those. I'm gonna sort of put my print in here. I'm not gonna move my horizontal line up so I'm touching. What I do is I leave it there, but it's a guide where I can have a horizontal line, put my print here, and I can make sure that my transfer is nice and parallel to this laser line, okay? It's nice and parallel, the edge is parallel to my laser line. If I was doing a center print, I'd be able to lay the center print down and make sure that the center print is parallel. The plastic edges are parallel to the laser marks, that sort of thing. You don't wanna be moving those lasers too often. They do take time to get perfectly square and set up. Once they're nice and set up and you've got a couple of positions, you might have couple of different horizontal ones. You might have your vertical and then you might have another vertical that's on left chest or something like that. And you only turn the ones on that you want. Cool. All right, so that guys, that's lasers. You do have the left hand side. You also have the right hand side. They only turn on when the top plate moves across. You won't have the lasers turned on while it's in that position. Cool. Okay, moving from that, we've got settings, okay. This little icon here is called pinning. Now, most of the time it has an X through it, but if we take the X off so it's got the pin, it's called tacking. And what it means is, if I hold these two buttons down, the timer actually times up. See how it's three seconds, four seconds, five seconds. As Soon as I let go, it stops. This is a technique for just tacking transfers in place where you just wanna press it for a couple of seconds and then up again, cool. Great little feature if you're tacking or you're just quickly doing a second press or something like that. Most people would have the X through and operate the machine where if I press it down, it counts down from whatever seconds. When it's finished, it gets up and moves out of the way. Okay? Now, as you saw, as soon as that popped up, it moved out of the way. That's what we call full auto mode, which is this little symbol right here if we want to have a look at. Cool. So see, we've got that little swinging sort of circle, that swing, that's full auto. Now the other settings that you've got is the semi-auto. So this is swing, but only with a foot pedal, okay? 
The foot pedal is the one that we showed you this, uh, early when we plugged it in. It's the one resting on the floor. And then the next setting is no auto swing at all. Now, as you heard, you might have just heard that little release of the, the gas strut. Cool. I can now push this left and right manually with my hands, okay? This is now manual mode. The foot pedal is not going to do anything if I press it, okay? but I can just push it out of the way. Sometimes if you're just sort of working, doing some sampling or testing, you might just wanna push it out of the way, move something, pull it back. The other feature here though, which is really important, okay, if I'm in full auto mode, when it's in full auto, it's actually quite hard to push. And if I push it, it, it wants to come back into that position. If I'm pressing and I hit the emergency button, which is this red one on top, okay, very important. I hit it, it automatically pops up but it also goes into manual mode, so I can straight away push it out of the way. It's not locked into the position. So just in case somebody's got themselves caught or something like that, the safety feature of this particular machine is if you hit that emergency button, it goes straight into manual mode so that you can push it straight out of the way. Cool, now, if you're using this red button up here as your stop button, because just press it down and I just wanna stop it, okay? Every time you do that, you've got to unclick it so that the red light comes on, but you've got to take it also from that manual back into the swing mode, okay? So you've got to click it back again. Best way to stop a print, I've pressed it down. Oh, and by the way, you've got to press both buttons at the same time. That's a safety feature, is I press those buttons again, okay? So that's how I can bring it up. If I just want to do a short press, a couple of seconds, oh, we'll bring it back up again just hit it again, okay? Don't hit the red button. If you hit the red button, you've got to reset your swing motion back and forth. Cool. All right, so I'll get that over there. I also want to just show you also how you replace the plates. Cool. Here, if we get down and have a quick look, over this side here, this is our release, our quick release. Okay, so this is quick release pin. That is in the out position. This is in the in position. When it's in the out position, pulls that pin out and this plate, come straight off, okay? This is how we use our interchangeable plates. We can put, take this off and put a smaller one on. That center pin, make sure it's just nice and tight and it's not loose, okay? Cool. And then it just sits straight into that little hole there. The plate locks down, give it a little swivel so that it locks into its uh, guides. And then we lock the pin in again. Once that pin's locked in, we can't lift that plate up anymore. It's locked in there, it's not gonna pop up, okay? Um, if we're having a look underneath, you'll see here, this is what we call threadability, okay? So if I take this shirt again and slide it on, this is really important, but you do need to make sure that you're using it right. When I slide the shirt on, you just wanna make sure that the bottom of the shirt slides all the way to the back and it's hanging low enough to go underneath. If you're not careful, you can slide it on like this and it still gets caught up around this base right here. Now it is designed to try to get it to slide and slide down. You can sort of see this angle right here. But the best way is just to make sure when you're sliding it on, on top, and then just make sure that you're, you've pulled it down to slide it on. Quick little technique, you'll get used to it and it makes for very fast feeding of shirts on and off your garment. By having that full thread ability to the back, you no longer have tension on your corners on the front. You have a perfectly flat garment to work with. It's not bunching up or anything like that. You're not getting stretch marks onto your garments, things like that. Uh, this is your adult size plate. Great to use the smaller one for kids and women's and things like that. Guys, this is your Dual Air Fusion. It's designed for efficient work and production. Little technique that I'm gonna show you right now is how to get the most out of pressing with the Dual Fusion is, and I'll show you this, you'll just have to pretend I've got some shirts and some transfers, but just imagine I've got a shirt, I slide it on, I get my transfer ready, okay? I put my transfer there. Use my foot pedal, I bring it across, but I don't go to press it. Most people will be like, yep, cool, I'm now ready to press, and I'm gonna press this down, and then I'm gonna start working on this side. The Problem is, in 10 seconds time, this is gonna pop up and move across. Most people can't get themselves perfectly set up in 10 seconds, so what I suggest doing is, 
It's come across, you're ready to press it down because the shirt and the transfer is there. Don't press it down straight away. Just hold, grab your shirt, okay? Feed it on this side here. Okay, feed it on this side here. Now I might have my transfers in the middle, okay? But before I grab my transfer and lay my transfer up, this is when I press it down, cool? Now I've got 10 seconds to take my transfer, place it where I want, line it up, whether it be a middle one, nice and square, excellent. It now moves over, I grab my transfer, it's a hot peel, I'll peel my transfer, okay? Within four seconds, if it's ultra color, grab this shirt, take it off, grab my next shirt, feed it on. Once I've fed the shirt on, and the shirt's looking good right here, Next thing I want to do is I want to grab the transfer and put it on, but before I do that, I press this down. Cool. I now grab my transfer, I line it up, and what I've got is I've got those, that 10 seconds to line up my transfer, get ready. Okay, cool, excellent, it's ready, done. It's automatically going to come across. Cool. Now I can grab my transfer, peel it hot, peel, shirt off, put the next shirt on, lock it down, grab my transfer, line it up. I've got 10 seconds to line that transfer up before it comes across. Guys, that is how you use this model from a production point of view, so that it's as quick and fast as you possibly can get. Super easy, sort of stress-free. You're just following the motion of the machine and it's working at your pace. That's how you do it. If you have any more questions around that, reach out to us. Um, more than happy to show you again. Guys, be very excited. This is the piece de resistance, the, the piece that, that it is the most exciting heat press that we have from Hotronics. Uh, the dual with the lasers, the threadability, interchangeable base plates, all of the menu options and things like that. Guys, it is a really exciting piece. If you have any questions, reach out to us. Congratulations, and uh, we wish you happy pressing.